two, one, and we've got a moving target. Whoa. That was hydro. Wow. Did you feel the heat? Did you feel any heat? Right. The second row, they felt the heat. Here we are 90 to 93 million miles away, and we feel the heat of the sun. What an amazing, amazing thing. You know, a long time ago, this was way back in the, you know, um, Middle Ages, I suppose you could call it. The Roman Catholic Church thought that everything revolved in our solar system around planet Earth. A lot of people still think a lot of things revolve around them, which is interesting. But there were some people, God has always had people of faith, men of faith, people of faith on planet Earth. And in fact, uh, Galileo didn't believe that. You remember Galileo? What an interesting man he was. He didn't believe that that uh, planet Earth was geocentric at all. He says, uh uh, no, planet Earth goes around the sun. He was right. The church got after him. Remember the story? The church got after him. And he went through this, this big, you know, judgment. And he had to recant. He thought, you know what? It's just not worth dying over. Just because I believe that, you know, one thing and they believe another. So he recanted. But they arrested him, anyways. They put him in house arrest. He was getting to be a little bit old at that time. They figured, he's not going to live very long. We'll just put him in house arrest. And he actually died being under house arrest. But the same year that Galileo died, a man by the name of Sir Isaac Newton was born. Sir Isaac Newton was also a believer in a creator God. God has always had men of faith here on this planet Earth. And now he has you and he has me. He's got all of us. We are people of faith, and we believe in a creator God. Interesting. Well, the flood came. The flood destroyed. Turned this world upside down. In a matter of weeks, I believe, not thousands of years or millions of years for the Grand Canyon, whatever. Now, that brought upon all kinds of problems. Anybody have problems? Should we all raise our hands? Okay, we're on this problematic earth, aren't we? Well, you know, I've got a little experiment here. Let's check this out here. Let me find my glasses right here. And let's see what we have. Uh, I have a balloon. I'm going to blow this balloon up. Now, the balloon represents you, represents me. I've got all kinds of colors, balloon, color, color balloons, but you know what? We're all different colors, aren't we? We are. Now, this nail represents a problem. The balloon is going to encounter a problem. Balloons are allergic to nails. Did you know that? <laughs> they just don't like nails at all. Now, what's going to happen if I put that nail right on, uh, that balloon right on the nail? It's it should pop, shouldn't it? Shall we try it? No. Okay. Yeah, I think we're going to do it. Here we go. Three, two, one, and... And it pops. It breaks. Now, that's interesting to me. You know, you and I, we come up with problems. We come up with trials. We come up with problems. Every day seems to have maybe another new problem. But you know what? Pull up the spoon again. What can help us with our problems? Anything? What? Well, I'll tell you what. I've got some more nails. I've got 300 nails. These are fun to make. And this, oh, it's sharp. These, these are sharp nails. So what are we going to do here? What are we going to do? I, I need somebody to help me. Oh, this gentleman right here. You want to help me? Okay. And this young lady right here. Yeah, you had your hand up, right? Okay, all right. So let's tell you what. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to move some of myself. Let's move over here where we have some floor space. Don't trip on those cords. Okay, there you go. Hey, thanks for helping us right here. Now let's see what we got. Okay. All right. And I need... What happened to my one nail? Here's my one nail right here. Okay, what's your name? Colin. Um, Colin? Hey, thanks for helping me today. And you are? Deandra. Deandra. Hey, this is great. Now, it feel like... Is that sharp? I mean, huh? No. It's not sharp. <laughs> okay. Let's see. What would be a definition of sharp? Um, well... Um, would you like to step on that? No. Okay. All right. 
I'll tell you what, here, why don't you sit down here, DeAndre, let me use DeAndre first, because she's got those nice shoes on, okay? So I'm gonna put this right on the floor. Now, DeAndre, would you, could you, would you like to step on that nail? No. No, why not? It would hurt. It would hurt? Why, you think it's too sharp? <laughs> no, okay, all right. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, I have some shoes that are kind of like yours, but they're thicker, they have thicker soles, don't they? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these together right here, just because, you know, if I have you step on that, I don't want you to hurt your foot, but that would go right through your foot. Now, could you just take one of your feet and step on that whole thing for us? And can you balance your whole weight on there? Balance your whole weight. There you go. All the way. Okay, you can step on. Okay. All right, you can step on. You can. There you go. Let's check this out. Oh, it did go through your foot, didn't it? It would have. In fact, feel that. Can you feel that? Feel the nail? No, right here. The nail is poking through it. It went through two of these thicknesses, didn't it? Well, that's what happens, Chandra, when we encounter problems. If we encounter a problem, I think we're going to need some help, aren't we? That's right. So if you wear thick sole shoes, that's a pretty good help. But you know what? What about if there's a lot of friends that can help you? Would that be interesting? Would it help us with our problems? We've got a lot of friends right here. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to spread all that up. Want to stand on that for it? No. You know what? You want to stand on this one? No. no. Okay. I guess I do. Okay. I'm just going to stand on those 300 nails, as many as I can fit under my foot. And there we go. Whoa. Just like that. Did my foot stick to it? No. No. It didn't. It just it supported my weight. Because there were all that force, instead of being on this one little nail, which popped the balloon. Now we had a bunch of nails was taking a little bit of force. Each one was taking a little bit of that force away. Isn't that a cool way to go? Well, I think so too. Now, I wonder how that works for a balloon. Hey, let's come on over here. Let's see what we've got right here. Okay, this is what I need the gentleman for. You want to come over here? All right, let's move this out of the way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this balloon right here. I'm going to put the top on this right here. What I want you to do, I want you to take your hand, I want you to force this plate with one hand and just try to pop that balloon for us, okay? Just push down. Mm -hmm. Just push down. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait. No, just one hand. Just push down. It's not breaking, is it? Wow. How would you like to have help like that? Now, we can have help like this, can't we? We can't. Okay, use two hands. If you, if you have to, just go ahead and use two hands. I mean, look at that. Whoa, whoa, is that hard? That is hard. But we have a bunch of nails, and they are all carrying a little bit of force, rather than one nail, carrying all the force, and that could really pop them. Wow. Hey, well, both of you, thank you for helping me. Thanks for helping me. Thank you very much. That's interesting. Wow. You know, hey, let's take, let's take a look at a, another text right here. Because we've got another text to look up. And that text happens to be in Psalms. Psalms 88. Check out Psalms 88. Psalms 88. Don't you like Psalms? If you open your Bible to the middle, it just about always opens to Psalms. Just about. And that's pretty cool. Psalms 88, and it's verse 3. And who wrote Psalms? Did David have problems? Oh, my. He had problems. He really did. And here, David, he's, he's down. You can tell by what he writes. And it says, for my soul is full of troubles. Is your soul full of troubles? Well, I bet you we could rake up a bunch of troubles today and just concentrate on our problems and our troubles. And that's what David's doing. For my soul is full of troubles, and my life draws near to the grave. Wow. We all have troubles. We all have trials. But you know what? If we go around facing that all by ourselves, that's a disastrous way, isn't it? We put our trust in God. Put our trust in God. God gives us people. He gives us friends. He gives us family. He gives us church family. He gives us pastor. He gives us counselors. He gives us relatives, and you know what? All of them together can protect us, can help us guard against that, that problem. But we've got to rely on Him first, and then we rely on people that He sends around us. Don't you want to be that help to somebody? 
There's people that are suffering there, and people that are just crushing you know, life away, just, just ebbing away. They have no hope. Well, I think this is what we talked about in the Sabbath school class today a little bit about that. It was very interesting. But that one nail, uh, that had a little hole in here. That one little nail, that's all it takes. I don't want that kind of pressure. I don't think I want that kind of pressure at all. Now, we have something else here. I, I actually have a bicycle over here. Did you notice there's a bicycle? Yeah. Okay. Let's get this bicycle out of here. Oh, let's see. Maybe we put it right here. And let's look at another text. Matthew. Matthew 5.16. Now, you know this text. Interesting text. You've read it many times. But I'm wondering if you didn't read it very closely. Matthew 5.16. Matthew 5.16. It says... Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let your light so shine. Well, this bike has a generator on it. All I need is a rider. Who wants to ride my bike? Oh, what do we have over here? There's a gentleman right there. You want to ride? Yeah, come on. What? Did you bring your helmet? <laughs> no. Well, I guess we're not going anywhere anyways, right? Okay, why don't you hop on there? Wow. But you do use a helmet when you ride a bicycle, don't you? Yes, you do. That's important, isn't it? You know that over 97 percent of all bicycle accidents and injuries involve the head. That's right. I fell on my head. <laughs> I did, riding a bicycle. Do you know what I had on my head? A helmet. And you know what the helmet did? Yes, and it cracked the helmet. So you got to wear the helmet. Okay, why don't you ride? You look comfortable riding in. He's actually, what's your first name? Yeah. Noah. Noah? Oh, I met you before. Yeah. Now, Noah's generating some electricity right now. Can you see it? Can you see the electricity? No, I can't either. How does it feel? Pretty comfortable? Yeah, you're on a cruiser, man. This is a cruiser bicycle. Well, I'll tell you what we may have to do. We may have to plug, we may have to plug some lights in here so that everybody can see that you're generating some electricity. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. That in there. So we have a couple of lights here. Oh, I need some light bearers. <laughs> oh, who has to help me in? Oh, okay, yeah. We have two over here. There we go. We got these are red, and uh, if you why don't you stand right here? You can hold this one. You can hold this one too. Okay. All I need to do is I need to find the end of this because Noah is going to generate some electricity, and I'm going to plug this right in here. It plugs right into the generator. And you know what, Noah? If you if you uh, pedal slowly, then the lights go on dimly. All right. If you pedal fast, then what do you suppose the lights do? Right? They get brighter and brighter and brighter. So I wonder how bright you can make your light shine. Okay, good. See if we can turn it back. Well, can you see that? No? Look at that. Is that bright or what? Oh, no, no, keep going. Oh, yeah. Look at that. That is so cool. Now, no, no, keep, no, we want to. Yeah, just go ahead and. Just keep it going because we want that just about as bright as we can. Okay? Don't get tired. Okay? How do you feel? Feel pretty comfortable? Yeah. Well, look at those. It's still pretty bright, isn't it? Now, just let me know when you get a little tired. Okay. You go a little faster though because if they're giving that, there you go. That is great. That is great. That's, that's bright, isn't it? Oh, no, it's slowing down again. Let me, know, let me know if you want to rest for a few seconds. You want to rest? You want to rest? Okay, he wants to rest. But you know what? When you rest, your, your light doesn't shine. Now, that's interesting. But let's look at the text. You remember what the text said? What did it say? Let your light shine. 
Now, was Noah letting those lights shine? Yes. No. What was he doing? Making them shine. You know, sometimes you and I get tired. Like, no. Because <laughs> we're too tired. We're trying to make our light shine. We're doing this for that person. We're doing that for this person. We're doing this for the church. We're doing this for that one. And so forth and so on. And we drive ourselves to tiredness. A bad place to be. Why? We're making our light shine. No. That's why people get discouraged. That's why. But you know what? What do I have here? <laughs> no, you want to hold it? This hole. And just shine it in their eyes. <laughs> Look at that. Is Noah letting that light shine? Noah is letting that light shine. That's cool. Hey, is that as tiring as making the light shine over here? No, it's not. Now, that's all God wants us to do. He says, let your light shine. But if we don't have an association with a light giver, if we don't know the person, the God, our personal Savior, if we don't know the Creator, in the beginning God, if we don't know that God that created everything, that came down to this earth to live a perfect life, to die for our sins, if we don't know that person, there's no way we can make our light shine and get tired. But if we let our light shine, He'll shine through us. What about the moon? Does the moon have any light of its own? No, not a speck. All it does is what? It reflects. It reflects the light. The moon lets its light shine. It's letting the sunlight shine through the moon. It's being reflected off. And you know, that's what I want. How about you? Is that what you want? That's what I want. I want God's light. I want God's love to be reflected through me. I mean, isn't that, don't you want to be that channel? Amen. But when we try to make our light shine, we're going to get discouraged. We're going to get tired. We're going to start to maybe keep track of all of these different things because oh, I've got to make this. I've got to make that. We can't do that. God doesn't want us to do that. God will give us the power. He'll give us the power every time. You, you did a great job. That's cool. And you, and you can you can go sit down and, and you may have to lay down and rest. Okay? And you can put those down there. Okay? Later on this afternoon, you know, if we you know, if you want to ride this, we'll we just you know try to get as many people tired as possible. <laughs> no, that would be good, wouldn't it? That would be good. Wow. Well, in the beginning, God. God was in the beginning. God doesn't have a beginning. He's the Alpha and the Omega. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And He formed the earth. A very special plant. A very privileged plant. And then it was destroyed. He decreated the earth with the flood. Tremendous amount of force. It turned this world upside down. And we find that archaeologically. We find that in the, in the different soil layer, layers. He turned the earth upside down. And then he sent a rainbow in the sky. A rainbow. God's first covenant with man. And that rainbow means that he loves us. He will never destroy this earth with a total flood again. Isn't that amazing? You know, even if we think about it right now, God is keeping that flood away. He's keeping that flood away from us. Right now, planet earth is spinning. It's spinning on its axis. And that spin creates a water bulge at the equator, above and below the equator, of about seven kilometers of water is bulging. If planet Earth stopped, slowed down, all that water would tend to go to the poles. We would have some severe flooding. It'd be interesting. God has so many ways of destroying this Earth. But He said, I'm only going to destroy it once. And then when I come back, you know what? I'm going to remake this Earth. I'm going to remake it, and it's going to be beautiful again. Isn't that going to be something to see? 
that is going to be something. Because there's still some places on planet Earth that are still so very, very beautiful. Wow. What a hint. What a hint of, of his creation for us.